Hello there, my gorgeous people on the internet. How are you doing today? In this video, we're going to cover SAS. Now, what is SAS? SAS basically allows us to do a lot of cool things that we normally would not be able to do in CSS. Uh, things like nesting, imports, and a lot of things that I'm going to cover in this video. So I think this is actually a super necessary tool to learn because once you learn SAS, I feel like you're going to have a very hard time just writing normal CSS. So, without further ado, get your VS Code ready. Let's get going. Alrighty, so let's get started. Hope you're excited. I just created an empty index.html page here. Let me remove this really quickly. Well, not empty. I just added some basic, just random text. I created a header with a h1, a button, a div with a class of contact, just a random submit button, and a class of info. Doesn't really matter. It's just the way, just so I have some text so I can explain SAS for you. Okay, the first thing we need is the actual extension. So if you go to the extension store here, and let's expand this, all you have to do is search for SAS compiler. And you can click on this and you can install it. Mine is already installed. It's probably gonna ask you to restart your VS code. Just hit restart. And after that, you're gonna see this watch SAS button down here. Okay, so again, what this is gonna do is just basically gonna take our SAS and it's gonna transform it into CSS because the browser cannot read SAS. It only can read CSS. So this is just basically transforming one thing to another. Okay, so let's create a folder here called styles. Okay, and rather than writing a style.css, we're gonna create a new file called style.scss. So S C S S hit enter on this big boy. And in here we can just write normal CSS if we want. So we can get the header, for example, we can add a background of light blue and that's going to work the same way. But how can we make the CSS out of this? Well, we can click the watch SAS button and we can close this up the panel. And as you can see, it just generates for us a style.css. Whoppa, how cool. Okay. We can link this. I think I linked it before, but let's link the normal CSS because that's the thing that actually is going to work for us. Style.css, link it in here. Okay. Let's open up the live server. And as you can see, it works. Perfect. So now we can just write SAS in here. Now, one cool thing that this extension already does is let's say if we add display flex, justify content center, hit save, control S, as you can see, it says success. It compiles it again for us. And look at that. It actually adds all the vendor prefixes for the different browsers that no, don't necessarily support Flexbox. And that applies to all the other CSS properties that might not work cross browser. So it does everything for you so you don't have to worry. So that's really cool, I think. Okay, but that doesn't really have to do anything with SAS. It just live SAS compiler is a gentleman enough to also drive you home after the date. Okay. So what can we do with this SAS thing? Well, first thing we can create variables. So if you know a bit of JavaScript, then this is super easy. If you don't, don't worry, I'll explain. Uh, let's just create one and we're going to see what it does. So to create a variable, all we have to do is add the dollar sign and we can give it a name. So let's say that I want to have a button or buttons on a website and I want those buttons to have a specific color, like always. So I can create one, let's say primary call, primary button. Okay. That's going to be the name of it. We can add colons like we normally do in CSS and we can just say a color that we want. So red, well, let's change it to something more appealing. Bluish maybe. Okay. Something like that. Hit save. Okay. Now this does nothing for now. However, when we, well, let me show you normally how we would do things. So in this header, I have a button and in this contact, I have a button. So normally you would do header button and you would add a, let's add a background of red. And then we would go to the contact button and we would add a background of red. Okay. So we want to have a consistent color here and look at that. It works. Everything is fine. But what if I decide that I don't like this color? because yeah, we change our minds so many times. Well, then I would have to go here and then just change this one to something greenish, for example. Then I would have to copy this across 
all the different buttons I have on the website, right? You're gonna drive yourself crazy because you just wanna change the color a bit and well, you have to change all the buttons that you have. Well, that's the problem. However, with variables, this kind of fixes everything. So rather than adding a, a color in here, we can just add the variable. So let me copy this and paste it in here and in here. So rather than adding a, a color in here, we just add the variable. And what that does is, as you can see, now we have this greenish color from up here. But now if I just change this to like something like a purplish or pinkish, it's going to change all instances where I have this primary button. So now it's super easy to change everything on the website. So we can have multiple here. We can have a maybe a text color. Okay, we can have a black or something, or we can just change it to a bit grayish. But right now we can just go to each section where I would have like text. And rather than adding black here, we can just add this new variable, so text color. And then we can easily just maneuver with this and change everything on our website. So that's variables. It's really helpful. It's probably one of the most powerful things in SAS that we can do. Okay, another thing that we can do is we can nest different things. So what I mean by that, rather than writing header here and then writing header.button, what we can do is in here in the header where we would write a normal property, we can just add the button in here. Okay, I'm just opening up it up normally like that. Let me just copy this background from here, paste it in here. I can delete this. And when we hit save, as you can see, nothing really changes because what SAS basically does, it reads this button in here like this, header button. And actually I can show you in the CSS that gets generated. As you can see, it just generates header button. So everything that we have in this header, a P, so we can add a paragraph as well, or maybe have a class in here, uh, like main text or something. All of these basically just mean header P and header main text. Okay, so this is a really cool way that you can organize all your code. So right now I know that everything in this header is basically in here. I'm not gonna find header all across my file. Okay, so it's a really good way of condensing everything into one. Now what if I wanna add, uh, let's say a hover or a focus or something like that, because I know a lot of people wanna do that. Well, in the button, if I want to add a hover, I can just do the and symbol like so. And I can just add a colon and I can write hover. Background, let's say red. Hit save. Let's see if that works. Look at that. No problem. And I can also add things like after and before. So for that, I'm going to need two colons here and just say after. And let's just change, add content. And I'm gonna say, hello, hit save. And look at that, it just adds it normally. So remember, if you wanna add focus, hover, things like that, just add the and symbol and just add a colon and that's it. Good, awesome, let's move on. Another really good, probably my favorite thing you can do in SAS is you can separate your code into multiple parts. And what I mean by that is rather than having all your CSS or SAS in here, we can take everything out of here and put it into another file. And let me just show you that's gonna work perfectly fine. So let's see, this file is super huge and I just kinda wanna have the header out of here. So in the styles folder, I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call this header. Actually, what we need to do, almost forgot, is add a underscore and then you give it the name you want. I'm gonna say header dot scss, like so. So you underscore, underline, is it underline or underscore? I'm so sorry, header dot scss, okay? And in here, I can just paste this code in here. Hit save, and now I can work on this separately. But this is not gonna work yet. If we take a look, 
it's not working. So what we need to do is we need to import this one in our main file in our styles.css. So in here, I can just add an import. So an add symbol and an import, and I can just add quotes, a dot slash, and we can just add the header dot CSS. Hit save. And actually, I don't think we need the header dot CSS. Let me delete this, hit save. And as you can see, it works. Yeah, we don't need the extension. It's gonna recognize it automatically. Let me close this up. And let's say I wanna also have the variable separate. So just cut this and let's add a new file. I'm gonna add an underscore variables, variables, vario, variables.scss. Paste this sucker in here, close this up and just import it above. Import variables. There we go. So look at that. Now I know that everything related to variables it's going to be in this file. So everything is going to be way easier to read and it just helps you organize your code. So there you go. Everything still works fine. Everything is perfect. Nice. Moving on. Let's add, let's go into our header and just add a height of 100 VH to this. Okay. Let's make it full screen. <laughs> this kind of looks awful, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so we added a display flex to this, a justify content center. Let's also add an align items center. And you're gonna find yourself doing this a lot of times, adding display flex, justify content, align item center. Wouldn't it be nice to kind of separate all of this into a small like function like we do in JavaScript? Well, fear no more because we can. So let's go above the header here and I'm gonna talk about mixins. So what is a mixin? It's exactly like a function in JavaScript, basically allows us to take some code and kind of put it in there and then we can use it across multiple, um, and basically anywhere we want. So to create a mixin, all we have to do is add an add symbol. I'm gonna write mixin and it's gonna ask me for a name. Now I'm gonna do the flex here. So I want to center everything. So I can name this flex center. Again, you can name this whatever you want. Okay, flex center. And here I can just add the align items, justify content and display flex, copy it, paste it in here, hit save. Now, as you can see, if I go back here, this is back to normal, but I can now use this in here. So how do we do that? Well, we can go in here and we can just do, let's go, let's go all the way up here. We can do add, include, and we can just get the name of the mixin, flex center. And we need to add the parameters in here, hit save. If we go back, as you can see, everything is centered. How cool is that? Let's also add a height. Let's say I wanna add a height 100 VH in here. Okay, hit save, take a look. Everything is still the same. And now, look, I can just go to my, let's let's go to this contact page again. I can just add include, and I can give this name as well, flex center. Hit save. And now look, everything in here got the same thing. Got display flex, justify content center, and the height. Cool. Now, what if I wanna maybe change this what if i want this to go in a row maybe i want to make this go in a column or maybe i want to even change the background colors well what we can do is we can add parentheses in here and we can add custom uh, parameters that we can change in here so let me quickly show you what i mean so maybe i want the, the direction to be different from this and this so we can just add a variable. Now remember how we created variables, we can just add the dollar sign. I'm gonna name this direction, okay? And in here, I can just add a flex direction. And rather than writing column, because that's gonna make everywhere column, okay, everywhere where we include this flex center, we can just add this direction that we created up here. So let me copy and paste it in this, okay? And now what we can do is in here is we can actually define this direction. Okay. 
So the way this works is we write something in here, column. This is going to go in here, and it's going to pass down here. So basically, this is going to mean column. But the cool thing is I can use column in here. If I want, I can use row in here, hit save, and it's going to work just like that. Let's go back here. As you can see, this one is in the column now. This one is in the row. So let, let me give you another example. Maybe we want to change the background. So I'm going to create a dollar sign background. Maybe I want to change the background color. I can just do background and I'm going to add this variable again. So let's do background. Okay. And in here, I can add a comma and just define a background color. Red. In here, I can do blue. Hit save. Let's go back. And as you can see, I'm going blind. Now, this one applies this light blue because I think we have it defined down here. So let me remove this. And yeah, look at this. <laughs> gorgeous. These gorgeous colors. Oh, all right. So these are mixins. Quite cool. Really helpful if you want to just create small little functions that, again, just like this display flex is, is going to do wonders because you can just write one line code everywhere and you're going to be fine. But you can, again, customize it with different kind of properties in here. Okay, just add the different properties, add it in here, and then you define them down here. Okay, that's mixins. Let's look at extensions. Uh, let's get rid of this for now. Okay, just to keep everything more simple. And this is quite similar to the other one we had. So let's go back to the header. And yeah, I can add the height, maybe the text color. Let's also add the background of light blue back. Okay, so maybe I have a lot of different styles on this header. And maybe I want to inherit it to this context. So maybe I kind of want all of these styles. So rather than copying everything from here, all the styles and paste them in here, we can just extend by writing at extend and the name of the thing that we want to extend, in this case, header. And what that's going to do is if we scroll down, it's just going to inherit all the styles from the header. And now if we want to override those styles, we can just go down here and just define our own styles. Maybe I, I just want to change the background color. And as you can see here, everything still remains the same, but we change the background color. Because remember, style sheets work from up to down. So everything you have up, everything you have below is going to override it. So if I change the background color down here again, if I change this, well, this is going to take place because everything up here is going to be overridden. Okay, there we go. So that's basically uh, extending and inheriting different properties. Good. Last thing we can do really quickly is we can also do calculations by minus, plus, uh, divide, and the star. <laughs> Not the star, <laughs> it's the multiply. Okay, so maybe you can also do width. Let's say 100% minus 20%. Well, this is something super obvious, but uh, this is going to work just fine, as you can see. So if you want to experiment with different uh, calculation operators, that works just fine in SAS. So there you go. That's kind of the whole thing. Uh, it's quite simple. It's about just kind of remembering the syntax a bit, but there's nothing really complicated. So we learn we can do nesting. We can separate our files with partials. We can use uh, variables mixins, which is really good of writing uh, small little functions and also inheritance. So hopefully you enjoy this one. I really want you to try it out if you haven't tried it. And maybe you tried it, but you haven't tried uh, live SAS compiler, which is it's just amazing. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around here and watching. And I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. See you next time.